Hi Katie and anybody else who wants to watch this. So I have been writing this blog series about how you take your linear agenda and kind of tilt it on its side, pulling apart the discrete learning activities to create a station rotation. And for those of us who are trained to create that whole group teacher-led linear model, it can be really hard to imagine what that looks like if students are starting at different learning activities or in different stations. The way most of us plan is everything in a lesson is dependent on what we say at the beginning. And so getting out of that habit of kind of thinking that way can be challenging. So Katie asked me a very specific question, she gave me three different days of what her or lessons um, of what her class might look like. And I just wanted to give an idea of how this might be reimagined with blended learning for anybody who's feeling a little stuck because believe me i was there right with you when i started in this journey and a lot of the teachers i coach are in the same position too so the first lesson katie said that students would conduct an investigation of how two pieces of tape interact being treated in different ways they're going to make observations conduct the errors purposes uh, complexities thinking routine about the tape and then draw an initial model of what occurred in the tape phenomena kind of with the student's best guess of what's happening. So that would be lesson one. And I assume the idea is everybody's kind of doing that at the same time. The teacher is probably circulating. Next lesson is students are filling in their notes with science concepts and definitions, obviously related to this particular investigation, come up with ways to test their initial tape model and those uh, and do those things, and then update the model with what they learned. And the next lesson has students completing a mini lesson on Adams in charge, taking a quiz, and then updating their model. Okay, so if I was gonna reimagine this, as I said, with a teacher in a coaching session, we'll just call this a, a virtual one, I would, if we were using blended learning models, I would say, okay, day one, one station could be what is the hook activity, that kind of investigation about the tape and how they interact with students manipulating it, making observations, asking questions. And in this station rotation, I would say this is probably where the teacher would want to position themselves or spend their time because the kind of informal formative assessment data that we're going to gather, watching students interact with the tape, listening to their conversations, their questions, watching them kind of document their observations. This formative assessment data is gonna be really helpful when we get to day two. So I would say the teacher is gonna support and facilitate at this station. Another station could be where students are taking notes and kind of fleshing out definitions. And maybe they're doing this reading a book. Maybe there is um, a video, a flipped instructional video the teacher creates to present vocabulary. Um, or maybe they take notes on paper or maybe they're capturing it online. This could be a, an interesting station for some student agency about how they take notes. Um, do they draw pictures? Is it just text? Are they need to have examples? Do we use a Frager model? What does that look like. Then we have the third station, and this one wasn't initially on Katie's um, lesson plan, but I thought this could be an interesting opportunity for building background about a particular phenomenon. So maybe they're going online and they're doing some research and trying to understand the concept that's kind of central to this particular investigation or sequence of lessons. There are other things that we could be doing here as well to kind of encourage students to kind of think more maybe think more deeply about maybe the previous concepts they learned so that they're prepared to make connections. But I'd love to see students doing something kind of collaborative here and building background is something that might support this entire sequence. And if you're like, oh, I don't know if I want them building background here, if the goal is to investigate here, maybe you create, you strategically position students who might need more support understanding some background information before they get to this hook activity, they could actually start at this station. Just a suggestion. Then we have day two, which hopefully you can see okay. So here's where I would put that mini lesson um, that is then hopefully differentiated. So the mini lesson was going to be on the topic of Adams in charge. So hopefully based on what we learned in day one here with the formative assessment data, we might strategically group students 
for this um, mini lesson experience so we can differentiate what groups might need more scaffolding or support or kind of a more a more challenging explanation. Maybe students did really, really well up here and made some great observations. And so here we want to kind of challenge them, push them forward, while for other groups scaffold it a bit more. Down here, we have them drawing their initial model and developing ways that they might test that model. This is a wonderful opportunity for some agency around, do you wanna do this on your own? Do you want a partner to do this with? Do you have some peer support? And then over here, it says complete the parts, purposes, and complexities thinking routine. Again, getting them kind of revisiting their notes from the hook activity the day before, um, getting them thinking more deeply about that activity. And then let me pause this real quick. Now, depending on the length of the class period um, and whether, you know, Katie can spend one or two days on this third part of the, the experience, I kind of like the rest of it as a self-paced hyperdoc or almost like a little mini playlist where students are starting maybe with a review activity, getting them kind of going back over that vocabulary from day two. Um, getting some peer feedback on their model, right? Can we have students exchanging models? Maybe give them a peer feedback choice board with some options for how they respond to each other, maybe even some sentence stems to help them craft a thoughtful, specific, kind response. Then we have revise the model, right? Based on what they found out from their peers, can they improve or change the model? And this is an area where we can, again, we can use our time as teachers strategically to support the process. So as students are revising their model, if they wanna have a conversation with us, if they want some informal feedback from us, they can come sit with us and have that kind of personalized support instruction feedback. Then we have them testing their models, taking that quiz to kind of see how much did they understand? Are they taking away from this experience? And then I would include a reflection, always some kind of a reflective practice about, you know, what did I think about, you know, this topic of Adam's in charge before this sequence of lessons? What am I thinking now? So that I used to think, now I think thinking routine is great. The connect, extend, challenge is a wonderful thinking routine, or even just having them think about what do I feel like I did really well? Where am I feeling confident? What am I still wondering about being with that metacognitive kind of practice. And the reason I have this formatted as a self-paced playlist or hyper document is these different activities are likely going to take students different amounts of time. And so by putting it in a container like a playlist or a hyperdoc, we give students a high degree of control over that pacing. We get to use our time strategically to support the students who need it. And then if you're wondering, but what if kids get done early? You can have them, you know, to choose an item off a brain break kind of choice board, or maybe have a list of items that they can work on the front board. Or maybe if you have a student who's self-paced through quickly because they are doing quite well in this unit, they could act as a peer tutor, kind of supporting other students who are still working through the playlist. So that's how I would imagine that sequence. I hope that's helpful. Of course, you can leave questions or comments if you have them.